Shalom for the Jewish people here. And salam Alaikum for the brothers and sisters who are in Islam. What's happening to the brothers and sisters off the street for the nationalists, free the land, and uh, whatever, you know. Yeah, hotel. Yes. Uh, this is a very important topic. Uh, M. Hotel, the African origin of Western architecture. Because uh, not many of us growing, growing up, going to school, were taught that Africans had anything at all to do with architecture. And in spite of the fact that over and over, time and time again, we have demonstrated our thorough and exacting methods of building and constructing buildings, no one ever bothers to write about it. And so when you look at the Tuskegee architects and the architects that built most of the black colleges down south, when Robert Taylor and the Tuskegee architects began to design buildings there, they had the largest freestanding dome, in the, in, not in the country, but in the world, larger than St. Peter's. But you can't find that in one book on architecture, not one book that I've seen in all the schools of architecture that I've studied and libraries that I've gone to, books that I've checked out, bought. I've never seen once mention about the feats of these particular architects here in America. Most of the, the uh, buildings in America, the colonial buildings, were built by Africans. The, the so-called slaves are the ones that built the buildings for George Washington, Monticello for Thomas Jefferson. All the buildings that you see that are monumental structures here in this country, African people are the ones who built those structures for the so-called uh, slave masters. But yet, we don't get credit for being uh, the thorough and exacting builders that we have been traditionally. Very, very few of us know about Benjamin Banneker and how this brother was able to to after uh, uh, Charles Elephant, who was uh, commissioned by George Washington and Thomas Jefferson to design the Capitol, he was engaged with the argument and ran back to France with the plans. But young Banneker was able to recall in his mind, not young Ban Banneker at this time, he was up in age, but he was able to recall in his mind the complete plan. And it is a reason, it is for that particular reason that DC is laid out the way it is because of the brilliant memory of Benjamin Banneker. But nobody teaches that to us in the schools. Our children going through elementary school, junior high school, high school, the university system, the injustice system, the miseducation system, they never learn about these feats of, of our ancestors. And Lord knows they don't tell us that we had ancient civilizations back in ancient Kemet, which we call Egypt today, and Ethiopia, and, and Ghana, and Songhai, the great civilizations in West Africa. <coughs> Africans have had a long history, the longest history in the world of building structures and buildings. And so since the universities, the professors with their PhDs and we always like to say, you know, when we get our, B our BS degree, and that's, you know what that is, the, the, the bullshit degree. I know there's a few kids here, but they're going to have to learn some of these words and know how to use it with discretion sooner or later. And you get the MS degree, which is the more shit degree, and then, <laughs> and then you get the PhD, which is the power high and deep degree. So they go through and they get all these degrees, but none of them, none of them have the wherewithal or the heart to stand up and tell the truth about African people. So since the PhDs at Berkeley, UCLA, Harvard, and Yale, and Princeton, and all these schools, uh, yeah, even the Morehouses, and the, uh, and the, uh, the uh, Voyees, and the black schools back south, like Alabama State, even those people who, who are African by nature are not teaching on this subject because they won't do it. Here comes a brother from South Central LA to do it for them. That's why we like. That's why we love Malcolm. You know, it, it, you know. This is a this is a this is a good time because, irrespective of how we feel about the movie, the fact that people are engaged with in dialogue about this brother, and because it will encourage uh, scholarship on the brother, this is a good thing if nothing else. The fact that we'll be able to talk about this brother, and so let me begin by saying, uh, categorically, if it had not been for this brother here, what you're about to see tonight <laughs> wouldn't wouldn't exist. It wouldn't happen. Because when I was going to when I was going to school, they used to have me painting murals of black discoverers and C Christopher Columbus and Ponce de Leon and Magellan and all these different people who were supposed to Columbus who were supposed to discover people and discover places, discover all kinds, even though people are living here, you know I have a lecture on the African presence in America before Columbus, so maybe one day we'll come back and do that. Uh, but nonetheless, He's supposed to discover things. All these people are supposed to discover things of people are already there. But they don't tell us about the vast civilizations here in the Americas that predate Columbus, when they had zero and all types of advanced mathematics, uh, striking uh, chords to the temples, to the stars, and these other things. They never tell us about that and how the, the uh, Spanish brutally 
brutalized the Native Americans and burned 5,000 in one, one place down in, uh, in, the, in the Yucatan Peninsula at one time, burned 5,000 of them. And yet they'll tell us that uh, they were coming in the name of Christianity and so forth and so on, but yet they would turn around and do this kind of hideous thing. So we know these people have a long history of, of telling uh, his story. And so tonight we want to get into our story. So one of the things I want to bring to your attention here is some of the recent ar articles that have come out, like this one here is, is, is over a year old now, but it, they asked the question, uh, was Cleopatra black? Fairly irrelevant question, but, but they asked it uh, nonetheless. And then this article came out recently in September of this year, Egypt and the Rise of Greece. And I just want to share with you uh, their feelings on this particular subject. Now, they categorically denied that, uh, that Egypt, not only did Egypt, they say, had no real major impact on Greece, but also that the ancient Egyptians weren't black. Now, Martin Bernal, who was a professor out of uh, Cornell University and formerly of uh, Cambridge in, in uh, England, he wrote a book that today is a topic of much discussion. It's called Black Athena, the Afro-Asiatic Roots of Classical Civilization. And in this particular book, Bernal argues that the ancient Egyptians categorically, for, for the most part, were black people. Now, this was, a, this, was a, this was a shift all the way to the so-called left, because Bernal is considered to be an insider. What I mean by that is that he, he's come up in the academic world in which people have developed a model of history that says that white folks have basically created and done everything. And so Bernal's grandfather, a man by the name of uh, Alan Gardner, wrote the definitive text on Egyptian language and literature and also a number of other texts such as uh, uh, Egypt of the Pharaohs, which is a chronology of Egyptian kingdoms. And so he was, a, he was one of those people who were involved in what Mark Bernal calls the Aryan model of history. And in this Aryan model of history, what they're saying is that, that, that the Egyptians had a very, uh, a, a very slight, if any, uh, uh, impact on the development of Greek civilization. And they more or less take the position that Greece is a monolith, that is, that Greece was developed in and of itself, a monolith of pure European development and culture. This is the position of the extreme Aryan model. Well, so Bernal, as an insider, took exception to this, and this is what has caused so much commotion. But let's say that but Bernal is not doing anything new, because long before Martin Bernal began talking about uh, his black Athena, we had William Leo Hansberry, Africa and Africans as seen by classical writers. I can't find it. The legendary work, the work of work, the stolen legacy by George G.M. James, brother who was hideously murdered for writing the truth. And so uh, since this brother was murdered for writing the truth, it's the least that we can do is pick up the book that this brother laboriously put together for us to read and to tell us about, and, and to know in certain terms, that not only the Greeks, but the Romans, all, the, all of Western civilization has lied to black people. Because anytime someone takes something from you and does not declare, in fact, that he's borrowed it from you, then in fact, that becomes theft. And so he appropriately titled this book, Stolen Legacy. And of course, we can't, we can't forget the master who recently passed in the last, last four years, I suppose, but Sheikh Anta Diop, who booked a legendary book. Yeah, Sheikh Anta Diop. All these brothers deserve a, a round of applause. And uh, Civilization and uh, Barbarism is a very important book. In fact, this book is very much in line with some of the information that you, I'll be sharing with you uh, this evening. So I just wanted to cover a few of those things, and, and also a fairly decent book. In fact, it's the only book that I can see is really dedicated totally to Imhotep. It's by a by European or of descent, uh, Jameson Hurry, a book that's on Imhotep. So I, recognize, I, I recommend that you do read this book because it does highlight the life of Imhotep and some very important things that you should know about this brother, which we will be sharing with you today. So now back to the article. Well, just to, to sum it up, what the, I'm not going to read the whole article. I'll just sum it up. What they're saying in this archaeology.